Oh, are you recording now? Yeah, it's just yes. Okay, can you pause it until we get more people? The offices that that did not contract COVID, they work double shifts, sometimes triple shifts. Being here uh, in one hundred percent in performing their duty uh, with without any hesitation. Uh, I can say that that the officers <laughs> on Roosevelt that are that that, that 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 are part of the Roosevelt Island Public Safety, they give it 110 percent each and every day. Uh, and, and during that time, we we asked a lot of those officers, and they never back down, and they perform to to the best of their, their ability. And they keep they continue to do that now that we are back to 100%. We're back to full staff. We're back to 100%. Uh, we have no one out with COVID uh, related illnesses. Uh, and and I can I can say this, you know, that uh, that that we preach community policing in the department, and the officers really really pick up that mantle and and attempt to and and do uh, a tremendous job in keeping the community safe. I've said it a number of times, uh, and I'll say it again this week. Uh, I like to say that Roosevelt Island, one of the safest communities in New York City, and it's not by accident. It's because the Roosevelt Island Public Safety Department, they give 110%. And coming to this meeting, I like to hear, I like to hear, you know, some of the, you know, complaints, some of the uh, issues that are going on so that we can become better, so that we can better serve the community. Because in the spirit of community policing, uh, and I believe this one wholeheartedly and a hundred percent is that the only way that community policing can work is if the public safety in the community works together. So we're going to do that. We're going to listen and we're going to uh, perform to the best of our ability based on community policing. So our staff is back to 100 percent. Uh, we're up and running. Uh, you know, we we did we have some some cold days, very cold days, uh, a, a weird warm day. Uh, but uh, if you look around this the streets, the officers are still out there on their foot posts patrolling the, the the neighborhood, and and that is something that that we owe it to the residents of Roosevelt Island is to be out there to be to have omnipresence to let the, Ro let the Roosevelt Island community know that we are here for them 110%. Talking about the crime statistics, well, before I go to crime, I'll talk about the vertical patrols because even with us being down during, during the month of uh, January, we still performed our vertical patrols. Uh, the officers who came into work, who were here present, uh, in, in Roosevelt Landings, they performed 308 vertical patrols, and that's about a little bit less than, than what the average had been, but the officers still perform. They performed the vertical patrols in Island House, West, Westview, and uh, somehow escaped me the last first, but Rivercross, River Cross, I'm sorry, <laughs> Rivercross. Uh, we had 37 in Island House, 39 in Westview, and 22 in, in Rivercross, which is about normal for our, our, our vertical patrols, with the bulk of, of the vertical patrols being in Roosevelt Landing and you know just patrolling the, the buildings, because that is the building that has the, the, the uh, no door stops. So we must patrol uh, uh, a lot more in those areas. The crime stats uh, in, in the month of, of January, and I, this, this has just been a, a theme, I guess, in, in communities all over New York City. We had, the only two crimes that we had were, were two assaults. Uh, one assault uh, was down at, at 30 River Road. The person who was assaulted uh, stayed in Brooklyn and they came to Roosevelt Island and reported it in Roosevelt Island. Uh, the other assault, uh, it, it, was a, it started off as, as a dispute 
uh, it it escalated from a dispute in the subway to an actual assault where where, where the victim uh, suffered serious serious injuries uh, the night of, of the assault. His uh, the perpetrated assailant was captured. Uh, both of both the victim and the assailant were not Roosevelt Island residents. Uh, the victim was was uh, treated for his injuries. It was hospitalized for a number of days, and the perpetrator uh, was arrested immediately after a, a brief search by PSC in the 114 precinct. The investigation in the hands of NYPD right now, and uh, you know the, the the perpetrator, the victim has, has been released from the hospital. The the perpetrator is uh, awaiting uh, the criminal justice system. Uh, we we do, and, and we've been working, we've been working diligently with with our homeless, our homeless, sm small homeless issue on Roosevelt Island. Uh, that we had a, a a homeless person down at at Motorgate. Uh, my my staff, they they've gotten to know the gentleman. Uh, he was once a, once upon a time a resident at at, at Cola, um, and we went. My staff reached out to to the social worker there, and and we've been trying to work with with the person to to not so that he would not be homeless. Uh, give him you know permanent shelter. Uh, he he was our, our one of our our, our issues in the, going back into January, and then there there were a few homeless in the subway system. Uh, we got a few complaints of of some of the homeless harassing uh, residents uh, in the subway system, which uh, we are working with NYPD, and th and they have promised they have put that they're going to step up their uh, patrol in in the subway. Uh, it, it is it's it, we have received a, a number of complaints and we are actively addressing it. Uh, we we have you know our our patrols they we don't patrol inside the station we do not patrol inside the station that's mta and that's nypd but outside the station we do uh patrol outside of the station let me just interrupt you for half a second yes. i saw that there was a picture that somebody sent me a photograph of somebody who i think it was behind the station in the um on on the property had made a little house or something or had a a sort of shanty that was behind not in the subway but outside i i didn't i don't have rick, that do you know exactly rick rick knew where that was do you rick do, could you say exactly where that was again yeah it's uh on the slope where the riverwalk commons is it slopes up to the back of the subway where there are bushes there so there's kind of like a plot i'm told there's like a plywood structure that was put up there at least two days ago. I have a picture that was sent to me. Maybe Ricky. Looks like, it it looks, like it looks like Dave knows more. Okay, I Dave. Don't, yeah, I don't know a lot more other than uh, that has become a uh, a favorite camping ground. Actually, uh, folks do uh, they're trying to survive and uh, and they find uh, their their shanty. I'll call it a shanty. Just uh, an area right there next to the wall. The uh, the uh, eastern wall of the uh, MTA building of the uh, subway, and uh, I don't know of them creating any aggressive uh, actions and so forth. Uh, I think overall they're just folks who are trying to survive, and and they've chosen that spot. And I, I don't know the extent to which PSD controls controls that uh, area. Uh, I haven't, I haven't seen. Uh, I don't. I'm not there all the time, but I haven't seen PSD actually patrolling that area. So it's right. Like, maybe uh, we can send Rick. Maybe you could, or I'll forward you the picture. But it is just behind the subway stop, and there were actually some pictures of people who have made beds. Not as, not as, not as. Um, artistically as I saw outside of Penn Station over on 31st Street, I was amazed. These guys set up four, like, you know, set up chairs and then put boxes down, I mean, and then covered themselves. They made a really, 
you know, elaborate thing. But there were a couple of other pictures people sent me of people who had made beds and were sleeping um, in them. So, but you will be aware. Where was that too, Rick? You sent me those pictures, right? Where do you know where those? Uh, on the uh, Queens platform, the Queens bound platform. Oh, that's so it's inside the subway. Yeah. That's not really their purview. Yeah, okay. if it's in if it's in the subway, Erin. Um, yes, I understand yes. the subway. Um, we don't patrol course, inside the subway, but it's something some, you, you can alert the MTA to. So right, that would be great. And the police are down there anyhow. Right, that would be great because there were also some concerns from some residents on the safety of the conditions. You know, it's always been a pretty draconian looking, you know, pretty horrendous stop, but uh, now. There's some, you know, things that are rusty and so I, I saw and, those I saw those pictures yeah. and, and you know I was made aware of them. Again, okay. we have control in some way. Uh -huh. but I will pass those pictures along to the Terrific. to the appropriate authorities. That would be great. Thank you, Kevin. Um so I'm sorry to have interrupted you. No, it's not, not a not an issue at all. So uh, go on with your homeless issue now. No, though there are some outside I, that I, are I will, I, will, I will have my staff look uh one of the, the the good things about Roosevelt Island, uh, yep. and that that I say with with the public safety, uh, we we we're not going to allow, uh, and and I I get it that you know we're 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 providing a de delicate balance with the homeless, uh, but we're not going to allow structures to be built. Uh, we're, we're just not going to do that. Uh, we, we, it's. I'm, I, I just sent the message to my staff and I have someone looking into that as we speak. Um, you know, if, if it's on, if it's on REOC's property, we're not going to let uh, structures be built. Uh, if it's on MTA's property, we will talk to MTA about this issue. Uh, but like I said, we are a thousand percent in, involved in, in, you know, trying to locate proper housing for for the, for these homeless folks, uh, I, I I believe that it's a social condition. It's not a not a criminal condition unless they do you know break the law, which we have to enforce. But but we are working with with a number of agencies and trying to uh, talk some of these people that we come in contact with into getting proper uh, housing. You know when when the when the temperature dips below. 32 degrees. We have this this blue cold cold weather alert, and um, it's not safe for any homeless to be out on the street. And we do uh, any homeless that are out on the street. We do uh, we tell them that we we have to get them shelter. Or they have to go to the hospital, basically. Uh, and and for the most part, they have been compliant. The homeless that are in the subway system, uh, the the only thing that we could do is notify MTA, notify the the, the transit police to respond if we get complaints of, of any homeless inside the subway. Okay, that is great. I just want to say briefly that uh, it uh, is quite touching to see uh, people in the subway, in the, uh, you know, downstairs, sleeping on the platforms. I mean, that, that was just heartbreaking. And, uh, you know, this, this is a social issue that's, that's, uh, that hasn't gotten any better. It's getting. It seems to be getting worse. It's not. It's not PSD's fault, mind you. It's not in NYPD's fault. It's. Uh, it's the lifestyles that some people have been relegated to having uh, to pursue in order to survive. It's just a heartbreaking situation. It definitely is. You're, you're a thousand percent right. I, you know, I def. I I agree with you a thousand percent that uh, you know that that is not something that you know. I I think that the the most hardened law enforcement officer does not like to see these conditions of just other humans not you know not not afforded the uh, the basic necessities to survive. I, I want to add more that. Rent um, more um, is Aaron? Yes. We Aaron. have buildings. Excuse me, but we have uh, buildings in this community. This building, this community was built around the idea of affordable housing. And um, I'm wondering why it is that some of the buildings, uh, the owners can't be um, approached to supply a few apartments, each one, two apartments per uh, building owner to uh, try to help uh, get 
folks into housing when we we have nothing but you know i mean all of our housing now is privatized but this was an, a, a, an island a community that was built on the idea of affordable housing for everybody as most of the people who are sitting here will recall who thank have you Jerry. Lived here for quite a long time go ahead anthony yes it's true go ahead anthony i, I just wanted to add I, I was speaking to a couple of the transit officers down in the subway um within the last week uh, about about the homeless sleeping down there and they are 1000 percent about allowing them to keep warm <clears throat> type of shelter and as long as they're not harassing anybody down there they're all for really trying to accommodate them to the best of their ability and not throw them into the cold most of them do not want homeless services they don't want to go to the hospital and you all want to be very compassionate to, hey, if they're not committing any crimes, allowing them to keep warm and allowing them to, to have bathroom facilities, you know, is something that they're all for. So I just, I, I did have a conversation with some couple of the transit officers down there. And, that, and like, <clears throat> if they're not committing any crimes, they really do not uh, want to push them away and, and put them in a worse condition. Thank you. And, uh, your hand is up, uh, Isaac, Ike, Ike. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, well, I mean, this is a bigger social question that there, there, there's no way that PSC or NYPD or any law enforcement agency can't be the one that deals with it, they, except they have to deal with the effect of it, which is of, of the horrible, uh, in my opinion, social policies that perpetuate and produce it. So basically, we could just manage a problem that seems to be increasing for for reasons that I think most of us should be familiar with, uh, which includes the whole pandemic and aftermath of it. So the only thing I think we can do, and I don't think we've heard any complaints from people about uh, brutality or, or lack of compassion. Uh, I, I obviously understand that, that there's limits on how much you can do. You're basically a managing a problem that uh, PSD is managing a problem that it didn't create. But at the same time, as long as it's being handled uh, humanely as possible and without uh, brutality, and I don't think we've, uh, we've uh, uh, gotten any complaints about that, then uh, it's just something that we have to monitor and at some point raise with the proper uh, political authorities that uh, if the situation gets out of out of hand more than more than it is and and deal with it i mean i don't know beyond that what we can do and i'm happy to hear that the top leadership of psd has a uh, a more uh you know enlightened attitude than than sometimes gets manifested i worked in penn station for 30 years and i can tell you that uh at times the problems with homelessness inside the station were just overwhelming and I could see how it overwhelmed like the Amtrak police force and stuff like that, you know, but uh, Thank you, yeah. I, okay. they, they really Rick. feel it's, man they're man okay. it's very manageable with the amount of people that they have down there. And they said, you know, winter always picks up because it's freezing outside and sure. they're looking for a place to keep warm. And as the, as the, as the months start to get warmer, they see even less and, and they feel that, especially on our station, they don't have that many, so that they're willing to, to monitor it and accommodate it to the best of their abilities. Mm. Rick, thank you, Anthony. Yeah. Um, I, I think there are, um, to, it's been expressed to me that there are increasing incidents mm -hmm. of emotionally disturbed people at the top of the subway or in the area at the bus stop who are harassing just people walking by and that's created a great deal of anxiety among some residents who have asked if it's possible for, you know, for every once in a while for a PSD officer to be in that area to try to clamp down on that kind of behavior. Is that well, at all possible? Well, I less in, in the last couple of weeks, I think that we received two complaints uh, from, from the same person or, or you know, two complaints two different people, but one person complained twice. Uh, <clears throat> we, we are patrolling the, the outside of the area. Uh, we've had my officers do 
direct the patrol outside of the area. And we will continue to do that. Um, I, I, you, you say that, that, that it's been expressing, I don't, you should direct those people to us so that we could address it. Uh, you know, I, I don't, you know, if you direct them to us, we will address it immediately. Or if you have them call our office, we can address it immediately. Chief, there, was, been, there, there so, was two complaints and I personally met with and interviewed both complainants you, Dave. that, that um, had the issues. Um, <clears throat> one specifically that felt that he was harassed uh, by the emotional disturbed person. Um, you know, I gave him the direct phone number to PSD, he said he called 911 and he waited a long period of time and he wanted to file a police report. He followed up with me and he said that he, when he did contact the NYPD, they wouldn't, they did not feel it was harassment because he was emotionally disturbed, that it was uh, a mental illness and uh, they would act accordingly. But like the chief said, we, we beefed up our patrols in that area. Thank you, Anthony. Dave. Uh, yes, just, just briefly, um, two things. Uh, I, uh, I've noticed that uh, we, it appears that the PSD booth Near the uh, near the subway has been removed. The booth that was there near Dwayne Reed, the subway uh, subway area, and was curious as to why. It, to me, I, I'm not around all the time, but it doesn't it doesn't seem that we get the same patrolling that 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 I see when I when I walk uh, walk north and by the uh, by the uh, dry cleaner store on the corner. Where folks, uh, a lot of folks hang out. Um, they seem to get a little attention. At least there are PSD folks walking that area. But I don't see uh, a lot of uh, PSD patrolling or foot patrolling in the Commons area in South. Is is that intentional, or am I missing something? Well, I I can say this: that the PSD officers do patrol down in that area. Uh, I think that they, you know, not that I think, I know that, that they're more visible on Main Street uh, where, where the, the stores are, <clears throat> but they are patrolling. I think you mentioned that booth. That that booth was uh, what we did with that booth. And if that booth was only there the last couple of months. It was not there previously. That booth came from when I and we parked it there for some for a little while because we were moving it, and now we sent it down to our garage to be cleaned up. There has not been a PSC officer or anybody inside that booth for the entire time that it was there. No one was it's, in that booth. That it's booth, been a long it, time, it, actually, that it's been there, but it was never utilized. It was there for four months. Oh. And the booth is, is out of commission. No one was ever in that booth. There was no one in there. That booth good, came good deterrent the, though. What's that? Good deterrent though. If it, you know, if you can't see who's inside of it and you're, you know, you're thinking to commit a crime, well, you, know, well, you don't know. What we did is that we're cleaning it and we're going mm -hmm. to then put it at a strategic location sometime in the future. We're going to use that booth again. Rick, you had your hand up. But it, was, it was never manned, Aaron. Uh, you know, I know, I know it was never manned. They, they, I said it know, just a deterrent. You heard that it was manned and it was. That was never, no, that was, I never, a, I never heard it was made. Wasn't that booth there for 10 years? Yeah, no. I thought the booth oh. was there for a long no. time. It's been there since after the 4th of July, we put it there. Well, um, it was Gara first. had put one there a long time ago. Gara had one there and it was never utilized. I don't know if it disappeared, but years that, ago. That it wasn't, wasn't that one. From it wasn't that one. one. Yeah. It was by the tram. It was by the tram station and then was moved by Cornell. Uh. And was moved to the subway, but was not there for 10 years. No, the other one had been at the subway. They had put it there. No one was ever in it, and it just sat there I, for a while. I don't know. It wasn't there since I've been here. Yes. Yeah. The one, that's, that one that we just moved has been there since after the 4th of July. It was moved there after the 4th of July. That was a place because during the 4th of July uh, celebration, it was in the way, so we moved into that area. And now it's been moved to our garage to be refurbished and used for a different purpose. So let me ask you something. Since there have been problems in that area, do you think that if you put it back there, it would be a deterrent for people in acting up or would have no, no purpose 
going back there since suddenly south town is saying that they're having more issues homeless people are you know starting to build houses there are people outside the subway you know it, it tends to be a place where there was, the starbucks had several issues with the homeless guy defecating uh would that booth be good there I, as a know, deterrent, even I, unmanned I, I don't know if that booth will be moved back there i think that uh, what we're going to do is put more patrol officers back there not just a booth we want okay. people to be able to do something to be able to help the community not just have a booth that you know that acts as a deterrent because what if someone needs help a booth is not going to help them we right. will have offices trolls there. yes absolutely okay and you're at 100 percent now so that should be able to happen yes it's happening it's already happened. happening it's yeah, already I think, happening i think we have hourly patrols in that area and then we also have officers who who take the time and they stand out or instead of just moving around that they stand out in those areas down there near Dwayne reed down there near the subway and starbucks so so we will have that we will con continue that uh you know there there, there is a uh, issue uh, that, that that's on the agenda about signage. Uh, I think that uh, at the last meeting that that and I see Mary's here. How are you today, Mary? I am well. Uh, yeah. uh, there there was a, a concern about the uh, the construction. They they have blocked the signs, and we did look into that, and they actually did block the signs, and we went to them to make sure that they uh, put the signs out that, that are more visible. There was a do not enter sign and also a stop sign. And it, it was their responsibility to, uh, to to put the sign back to where that they will be in proper usage for the uh, community. Yes, I saw that it had been replaced. Yes, so thank you for bringing that to our attention and uh, it, it has been replaced. Uh, we, we, there, there was uh, on, on our agenda, the barricades at the hydrants. I talked about this the last meeting. I almost tried uh, to put my headphones. I, have, I always have them, I always have them, I always have them, never can find them. Barbara, you need to unmute you. Okay, go ahead, go uh, ahead. I, I, I talked about the barricades the last meeting. Uh, the barricades are there to prevent, you know, unnecessary uh, people uh, parking and, and standing on the hydrant uh it it is it, it just something that that we had to do uh i i checked in with the fire department uh the fire department is is 100 percent in favor of it uh i talked to the fire chief myself and uh the barricades they, they'll be there at that location uh there was a question of why were they removed and then they were put back uh they were removed for the snow when the snow came uh the uh the, the plows could not uh we had all the cars move off of Main Street and we had to move the, the barricades off of uh, Main Street also uh, so that the plows could properly plow the uh, area. One thing I, I do have to say, uh, and I, I have to give some of the, the other departments in REAC uh, uh, some kudos. Uh, during the snow, uh, our guys in REAC, and I know it's a public safety issue, but it halfway is because I was here during the snow. Uh, and when it snows, I'm usually on the island, you know, so that, you know, we can coordinate the activities. And the guys in the, in the grounds department, they were out there overnight, all night. Clearing it from the streets, making it passable. Uh, I live in Long Island and, and my streets weren't plowed like Roosevelt Island was plowed. Uh, we have a, a great, rapport and contract with with Department of Sanitation. Uh, they do salt passes uh, continuously, making sure that the roads are, are clear and passable on Roosevelt Island. So, uh, you know, like I said, it's not a PSD issue, uh, but those guys in, in Brown's apartment, they, they did a, a, a bang up job in, in making sure that, that the, the roads were clear, that the snow was clear, that the red bus was running uh, during this time. So with that, you know, uh, 
They do. They, I have to admit, I used to, when I was in Brooklyn and I would come, Roosevelt Island does a good job. Uh, I sort of curse the, uh, some of the other people that should be doing it and don't at times, but they have. Uh, I think that uh, Sherry wanted to say something. She had had a <clears throat> hand raised. Sherry? Oh, no, I muted you. Hold on. Unmute. You have to unmute, Sherry. Okay, there we go. Okay, I thought I had before. Okay, um, I'm, I'm actually, the reason that I'm in the meeting, and I'm sorry I'm in and out because I'm making dinner. <laughs> we eat late. Um, the reason that I, I sent Aaron a note about this, um, we've noticed that there are barricades on the street, and there's one right by in front of the bread and butter store. And now I, I guess I understand you're doing that to protect the fire hydrants. Is that correct? To keep yeah, them we, clear. We don't want, cars. We don't want uh, these num number of cars that were parked. Okay. On. Okay. That's fine. Uh, that, I have no quarrel with that. But my problem is yesterday, I just had knee replacement surgery and I have to get into the bus and the bus needs to pull up to the curb if at all possible. Um, most Many times I've not had a problem with this, but I noted yesterday we were waiting for the bus and there was a van, a little white van, maybe a delivery guy, I don't know. Nobody was in the van and the van was running and it was parked right behind that barrier at in front of uh, Bread and Butter or by that bus stop. And I had to walk out uh, down the little cutaway for the driveway that was there for 591. I had to walk around and out into the street to get onto the bus. Now the driver was very good. He waited and he lowered the bus and that was not a problem. But it really was, you know, my concern is that I'm holding up the bus to get there because I can't get on from, I couldn't get on from the sidewalk. Also that this van was sitting there with nobody in it, but it was running. And there was not one public safety person around there. Often that's one thing. The other thing, I'll just say this very quickly is when we come home on the red bus from the subway or the tram, we get out at the Westview stop. And I know this happens in other stops too, probably, but we have to be very careful. The bus driver will honk if he sees a car pulling out around behind him to come through the crosswalk, even if there's a stop stop signs you got in the middle of the street these cars will go through those stop signs and we have to be very very vigilant that either the driver lets us know there's somebody coming i mean i'm i'm really careful i look before i go past the bus but i've seen cars that have had to come to a pretty abrupt stop because they suddenly they see people in the crosswalk that they were ready to drive right through and this is really a problem. And there, there, you know, this has happened to, to me. I've seen this many, many times. And there are very few public safety officers out on the street by the crosswalks. They're out there when the kids are loading or unloading or coming into school or going, you know, leaving school. That's fine. But they're not out walking up and down the street watching what's going on in the traffic, as far as I can tell. And this is, I know this is a complaint you get frequently. Well, I could tell you that we do have public safety out. Uh, I would not say that they're out at the crosswalk waiting to cross people other than no. at, at the school time. They're, they're not usually out there, uh, but they are out watching. And it is a problem with the, I, I can say that I I do hear you and I understand your, your, your complaint about the, the motorists who go around the bus to pass through the crosswalk. Uh, I see it my own self. I, when I, when I, I drive on the island. So when I'm driving on the island, I don't pass the bus. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll, we, we have been talking about this for some time that when, when the bus is, is uh, up and discharging passengers, how would it go around the bus? Um, I can tell you right now, I don't have an officer that can stand in each and every crosswalk that when every, when a person gets off the bus. Well, there I needs to be that. better signage, perhaps. When a bus is discharging passengers, please wait for the passengers to cross. Yeah. yeah we, Some we, signage that people we, have to be able look, to we, see. We are definitely looking at that. Uh, there is a whole 
uh, island project with but, the signage and with the roadways, but, but but that's not the only thing. The other thing is the the issue of the van that was parked there, running with nobody in it and blocking the 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 space that the bus could have pulled up into. I do, I do. Uh, you know, we, we're we're out there. I have an officer assigned to that area, uh, so oh. so we we are looking into that. We don't. We want the bus to be able to pick up and discharge passengers. Uh, unfortunately, at the time when you were there, maybe the officer was was somewhere else. Maybe he was on an assignment. But you know, we we are uh, we are actively uh, looking at that area. We we are patrolling that area, and uh, you know we. If you're going to put up barriers, if you're going to put up barriers around the fire hydrants, then you have to be watching what what's happening with the what's happening Harry? on the at behind or by oh. the. All right. This has been barriers. this has been something that we we they're definitely working on, continue to work on. It's something that we as Rira have noticed that there is definitely a large influx of vehicles, especially since the pandemic. Many more people. It's traffic is a huge issue. Parking is a huge issue. And REOC has now opened up. I mean, there's a 400 car waiting list for people trying to park in Motorgate, if you can imagine. So you can imagine the numbers of cars going back and forth, plus deliveries with Amazon and all of these grub hubs and all of these people. Right. It's it's really difficult. And we have okay. 44 officers who have other things. We got the things, you know, the little men may seem silly, but at least it keeps um, them aware that there are stop signs, you know, where we're right. trying different things. We've been working on signage. We've got a lot of new signage, um, but we're definitely we're aware of these problems and we are working on them. An idea um, on, on the backs of each and then buses. Mary, after, after you, Mary. Okay, go ahead. I just I just want to say on the backs of each of the buses, there should be some signage that says, please do not pass this bus. It is just when it is discharging passengers. That if you're behind that's the bus, idea. if you see that sign, at least you've got that. Uh, I, I Amy, will, I, that's a good I, idea. I will Amy. definitely take that back to uh Cy, Cy, I, I don't know if you guys know Cy Opperman. Yes, we do. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Cy, Cy, Cy is, you know, 1000 percent in tune with the community and uh, I'll have a conversation with them actually tomorrow. Thank uh, you. And, and see how we could, you know, do do something about this because that's a good I'm idea, totally actually. Sick. All right. I've Mary, noticed. I thought yeah, so. thank you. Uh, I'm just doing a little catch up on things that have previously been discussed. Okay, but we, Mary, you were late and we have gone over a lot of this and we pro I promised Kevin we would not go back. So no, what I'm, is it? No, I'm, I'm going to things that we Aaron. just discussed right now. Oh, okay. Go ahead then. Like, That's there is something ironic about protecting the fire hydrant outside the deli when in the fire hydrant outside the church there are often trucks double parked making their deliveries at a wholesome market, or there are just private vehicles. And I always look to see, is there a public safety officer anywhere on this street to tell these people, move your car, that's a fire hydrant. So the one in front of the deli is sacrosanct and the one in front of the church is nothing. And in terms of the stop signs, yes, uh, Kevin, I was very happy to see it had been pulled out from under the scaffolding. But what uh, Sherry referred to as those silly little signs, two of them have been down for days. They're outside Westview, or they should be outside Westview, and they are not there. What's the story? I'll look into it. I that they were down, but I, I will look into that right now. Kevin, you have officers supposedly patrolling the street all the time. And nobody comes back and says the stop signs are down. I said I will check to see. All right, so this is the way it works, Mary. When the stop signs are down, public safety does not put them back up. We have to put in a ticket so that the grounds, so that the maintenance department can repair them. We don't pick them back up the same day that you see them. I said that I will check to see what the status of these signs. Fine, thank you. Thank you, Adib. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Mary. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I, I 
I want to answer Mary, but my question is something different, but I think it might be because of a snow removal that some of the signs might, might have been removed or fell off uh, with the big, um, you know, the cars that removed the snow. But um, so um, another question um, is, or an issue that I thought maybe um, could be resolved um, the main street is dark, especially in front of the daddy all the way down, it's dark. And I was wondering, um, Chief, if you've ever, um, you guys considered putting these uh, reflective um, small things that, that are in the middle of the street or at a stop sign, um, because th that might be a def uh, deterrent to cars to pass if there's these lights in the middle of Main Street. And also I've noticed a lot of cars don't really see people crossing the street at night. Um, a lot of cars keep going and then they stop when somebody is right in front of them. If you're, if you're asking me about the lighting on Main Street, I, I'll, I'll have to, you know, have the maintenance department look into that uh, and see how they could uh, better, better, better make the lighting uh, we we are in the process, and I've, I've mentioned this a few times, of reevaluating all of the signage on all throughout Roosevelt Island, uh, especially on Main Street, where the majority of our, our, our foot traffic is, uh, and, and we will have, you know, an update on that soon. Thank you, Kevin. And as you know, we we've, we've mentioned to you the issue, and hopefully uh, somebody is looking at it up near uh, the Christides area. That motor gate issue. That that's that crosswalk right in front of uh, River Road is very. It's very dark in that area as well. And I think that's part of the problem and visibility up there with the crosswalks. Uh, Frank had given had given you something that referenced the various issues with lighting around the island. I think Island Services was also working on that, weren't they, Rosanna? Yes. Island Services is also working. That's, that is a big issue, uh, the lighting, um, as far as visibility. All right, so the only, another thing was just the potholes, the dangerous conditions around the ferry. Uh, we had been discussing that in the past, Kevin, and I know there's a master plan. I'm just wondering whether there had been any update on when the, that, my issues that we had presented. I know piece by piece are having been done, but is there any update on being able to to see some more progress uh, before the spring? I, I I will get get a better answer for you, but what I'm told is that the progress is being made. That they are working. Uh, there there was, from what I understand, uh, and and this is what I've been told that we will definitely see the, the fruits of the labor of, of the capital planning and projects and the maintenance department, you know, and, and the upgrade and in, in just the, the different potholes and the different roads around Roosevelt Island. Another issue that I didn't have on here that Mickey had brought up was parking. Um, you know that there's parking. There wasn't a, a place for unloading at Westview. He also mentioned, and I think Frank at one time had mentioned, more parking would be available in Southtown if the spaces were were drawn as you have done on the east on the west side. If they did the same on the east side, it might give you a little bit extra parking. Yeah, and, was, and we we did we what we that that was another part of the plan is that uh -huh. to uh just just evenly space the area going into right. south town so that there will be designated parking areas for all of the vehicles and then that would kind of uh you know make the parking a, a lot more uniform at the time so yeah, we, think, they are working on that right now that would be great and the other thing had been the app that we have uh spoken about in the past so that people could use their app with their with the machines so that, for instance, honestly, it used to be the main shopping area, Main Street. So they only give us 45 minutes, I think, altogether. You get to, for as long as you can park, unlike over by Christides and Manhattan Park, where you can get six hours. So to try to do something in that amount of time, 
is you can't even unload your car sometimes in that amount of time and put the stuff away and come back down if you're trying to get a ticket. So we had talked about placement of where you can locate the tickets, which are not adequate on Main Street. I know you have plenty on the other end, but they don't mean anything to the buildings that have the residents in Main Street in old, you know. <laughs> I, I, know I know I sound like a broken record, but yeah. that too is part of the capital planning project. Uh, making uh, the, the parking issue to, to solve that, you know, uh, I don't know, and this is one thing I don't know about going to an app for parking. Uh, I, I was told a few times that we, I don't think that we're going to an app for the parking. You don't think that that you know they do have them, but we yeah. wouldn't. Yeah. Want to. I, could you please turn your phone off, here? Chief? Go ahead. I believe that the reason why, uh, it, it, because of the system that we're in, um, the way the way they have the apps throughout the rest of the city is the Department of Traffic has those digital uh, computer systems where they're able to check if the app has been done. Um, and I don't believe Roosevelt Island, because we're still writing paper summonses, we don't qualify from the Department of Traffic to get those scanners for the amount of people that we have on the island. So I think that that was one of the main reasons why we could not utilize the app. We would not be able to, to know if the, um, the tickets were, you know, the, the, the person was paid or he wasn't paid because we don't have digital computer systems. Only the Department of Traffic has that. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, Mary? Yeah, I, here I am, Kevin, the broken record. On Saturday, I walked the length of Main Street. There was not one empty parking place and there was not one muni ticket on any car and there was no public safety officer writing tickets all right thanks. a statement of fact all right thanks thank you and thank you mary uh, i see barbara spiegel uh, unmute Barbara? There I am. Okay, now I'm unmuted. Um, yeah, my, uh, my uh, just a simple complaint, and that is, of course, it's simple. Um, that is that um, today I had an Instacart delivery. Um, I couldn't, I am sick. I, I had COVID. I'm getting better. I am getting better, but I did have COVID. And um, so I couldn't go downstairs to greet my Instacart person. I needed them to come upstairs and they did need to double park um, in order to come upstairs. Now, I went, it ended up that a police officer chased them away and they couldn't double park. Um, I have a, um, I have a contact list. Um, I have a, my directions to Instacart is to be contactless. So they're supposed to just leave the packages in front of my door. And then I, when they leave, then I go get them. And that's how I've been doing it for two years now. Um, and this time the, the Instacart person wasn't allowed to come upstairs. The police officer, the public safety officer um, chased them away, wouldn't let them park someplace else. And um, I eventually had to go downstairs, even though I had COVID. So I didn't think that that was a safe, a public safety to be doing that. So um, I, I wanted to uh, hear somebody of the authority talk about that subject. Barbara, what building are you in? Um, I'm in River Cross. River Cross. Okay. Kevin? Okay. I can say this. And my officers, they try to work with each and every person, especially the delivery people, so that they could deliver. We they, During this pandemic, uh, we, we have been faced with a rash of more delivery people on the island. And we try, they try, the officers try their best to accommodate every person that, that, can, that can fit on the island. Now, this is what we this is what I, I have seen and this is what I know. Sometimes there isn't a place to put someone. Sometimes okay, there just isn't. But may I interrupt to say that I this was eleven a.m. this morning. 
I went out there to, to get my package because nobody, I, they couldn't deliver it to me. There was not one double park car and there was not one um, wholesome was not getting any deliveries. So there was no delivery trucks. There's no double park car. There was a hydrant. I mean, I don't want to block the hydrant, but I mean, there definitely was a place to park. The police officers, oh. your public safety officer, whoever was on at 11 a.m. this morning would not let my, my Instacart stay um, I, I, um, I will tell and you. that is that that is unacceptable for somebody who had COVID to to come downstairs and to and, and to expose people to COVID. Okay, I, I will look into this safety. Situation. Is it possible, uh, Kevin Barbara? Often, uh, if you have that kind of issue, is it possible, Kevin, that she could have called the station that, that, and what, said, I, I, mean, "I have a delivery call. downstairs." Who is unable to park? I, I have COVID. Did I need a call. Yeah. I, I, but I, did that, I even know that? Did I know? How would I know that? Well, that is some, something that, that I would you. even know. Yes, it's known here. When you park to unload, and I get, it's like I get that deliveries every. Call. I get I get Instacart three times a week. I and they never yeah. had trouble before. They never had trouble. I've never had trouble having Instacart to deliver to me. So I get instant card. I get all the I get um, all the other delivery companies delivering to me, and, okay. and I've never had anybody stop, be stopped like that before. Well, I again I, I apologize for the, the issue that you have, uh, but I can tell you you know in the future if you have an issue like that, call the office. Uh, either myself or the deputy is here. Uh, you do know that I did call. You do know that I called afterwards, and I, I nobody. They said they'll have somebody call me back. Nobody called me back. Who'd you speak with? You know, um, I no. I, I just whoever was at the desk at eleven a.m. this morning. Well, I don't know who I spoke I, I to. Was in, I was in an ele I was in early this morning. I, if I would have known, I would have. Called I was crying. I was actually crying. Well, like I said, I, I apologize. I'm sorry that you had this issue. Um, but please, you know, reach out to us. Either myself or I did. Is in. Well, this is the point, Barbara, that you can now, uh, especially we were talking earlier, it's been really difficult for all of us, as well as public safety on the island, with the increase in traffic, with the increase of packages, with the increase of deliveries, with all of the problems, the constructions, and we're working on it. Everybody is trying to work on it. Uh, one thing in the future is if you have someone coming who is saying to you, I'm coming, let public safety know, and then they will be allowed to park. Uh, they will be allowed to park. So I, it's unfortunate. You know, we've all, believe me, everyone, I have my horror stories too. I'm in Westview. I don't have an unloading zone, you know, and I used to park my, try to unload my truck and I got the same thing. Um, but it's also just so busy, so crowded that it sometimes it is a nightmare. And, you know, well, and this time at, 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 at 11 o'clock this morning, Barbara, it was a nightmare. Personally, if Barbara, if I'm if I'm here, I'm usually here early in the morning. I will make sure I accommodate any delivery that you get, Barbara, moving forward. Okay, because I get, like I said, I get an instant card special. You just, have to, you just have to give us a call. You just have to give a call, Barbara, if you have a problem. You've only had one problem in all this time, but if you have another, you just give me a call and I will accommodate you. Without a doubt, I, 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 let, let's just pray. I have a, a negative um, COVID test. But if you do, Barbara, <laughs> I'm here for you. Okay, thank you very okay. much. Okay, Adib, thank you. You're welcome. Go ahead, Deeb. Um, it might be that um, Rira and um, um, PSD could work on a, um, a campaign with the phone number uh, for handicap in each building that um, that we will send a notice to either the door station or the management of each building saying if anybody in your building was handicapped and receiving, here's a number that you would call. And this, this way, you know, now Barbara knows, but other people might not know. All right, that sounds, you know, that, that is doable. Uh, you know, they, I think that our number is listed in all the buildings. Yes. Uh, and, and people call us for, you know, runs the gamut. And we're not, we don't mind being called for somebody who needs help and uh, just call us and we'll help. Thank you. 
Eight, Thank you, Kevin. Eight, four, five, four, five. Okay, so I think that, uh, are there any other questions for uh, the chief or for Anthony? Any other, anything, other issues that people wanna bring up? I think our agenda is gone. We actually did it in an hour, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, raised hand is Rick and we're not going backwards. I promise the chief, we started on time and we've covered everything that was in this, uh, in our, actually everything that was in the agenda. So uh, go ahead, Rick. Uh, there was a resident who made a, uh, a donation at the public safety officer for the Toys for Tots during the holidays. And she told me that she saw her donation at the youth center. And I was wondering if you knew anything about items from the Toys for Tots going to the Roosevelt Island Youth Center. Who did she make the donation to? To the Toys for Tots. In who, the, who did she uh, make the donation to? She dropped it off in the youth center box. She dropped it off at the youth center? No, I'm sorry. She dropped it off at the public safety office. And she okay. later saw the same items at the youth center. Okay. Uh, I don't know which resident you're speaking about, but this is whatever toys that were dropped off at public safety, uh, they were not delivered during the Christmas time because not only were we down 21 officers, uh, during in COVID was, was rampant during that time. The youth center, their entire staff uh, had COVID also. I believe that or most of the people at, at the youth center. So we did not deliver toys during the Christmas time. So what we did, and if, uh, I don't know who you're speaking about, who said that they saw their toys at the youth center, uh, the director of the youth center collected all the toys, the toys that were at public safety were collected. And we're going to hand out all of these toys that we collected, public safety and the youth center are going to be delivered on Thursday. Thursday is the National Day Act of Kindness. Uh, it was it was picked out back in January. Uh, the people who who were involved in 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 donating toys and if they wanted to know about it, if they inquired with someone, uh, they were told where the toys are and when they will be delivered. So. Uh, I, I'm not, I don't know who you're speaking about who said that they saw the toy somewhere, uh, but the toys will be delivered on thir this Thursday, February 17th by the youth center staff, public safety in the 114th precinct. Delivered to who? Excuse me? Kids. Delivered. Kids. Which kids? Kids that signed up that were supposed to receive these toys during the Christmas holiday. Okay, great. They just wanted to know. Thanks. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, thank you, Rick. Okay, so I think that uh, that's the agenda. Are there any other any other questions? I want to thank you all for coming uh, today. We actually did it in in an hour, which is amazing. Um, anything else? Just two more questions. Oh, okay. Two participants, and we're going forward. Romana, unmute yourself, and then Rick. No, oh, I'm yes. done. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Romana. Okay, thank you. You're on. Yeah, I just wanted to um, uh, make you aware that I also like um, witnessed, um, I guess, a shoplifting um, in um, at the pharmacy and um, at the Walgreens. So I'm just wondering, there's basically like two young kids that ran out with like um, a couple of bags, I guess, of ice creams uh, that they just pulled out from the containers. And um, Apparently this has happened multiple times because the manager was there and he called and, um, you know, he was just complaining out loud. So I, I was sort of witnessing and hearing this whole, you know, this uh, incident. And so, um, you know, and I know that they did, I guess, call public safety because as I walked out of the pharmacy, then, you know, they were arriving at that time. But I think it's just the idea that, um, you know, like the other customers that were in the store also, you know, residents of Roosevelt Island, very concerned about the fact that, you know, that store now, it just seems very, very easy to come in, grab a whole bunch of items, grocery items, whatever, and just walk out with it and have it happen multiple times. And you certainly have multiple residents now witnessing this. Um, you know, 
certainly like having some type of presence of public safety, you know, by the subway, by that, um, by the pharmacy is probably really well worth it at this point. Because I think the last thing you want is to have a reputation where it's very easy to come and shoplift there, especially since it's happening multiple times. But I figured you might have statistics on it. So maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Thank you. After this, Rosanna, and then, uh, and then. Um, if, if Rosanna is, has something to add to that, I can answer both at the yeah, same time. Right. Rosanna, go ahead. Yeah, I would like to say that the shoplifting is not the PSD duty, but is NYPD instead. And uh, so there are multiple, in fact, I also witnessed myself uh, shoplifting, shoplifting about two weeks ago or two weeks and a half ago, a similar thing, but that is a jurisdiction of um, uh, NYPD. So while I agree, obviously, to have more presence, yes, can be a deterrent, of course, around any uh, residential area and around the island. But uh, calling public safety for the shoplifting is not going to help anyone, either the store or the, the customers. So for that, uh, Kevin, I don't mean to say what you should be saying. Well, I, I can say this. Uh, we, it is a concern of, of, of just the community at law, as, as a whole. It is a concern. But, uh, you know, one of the things that, 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 you know, we've been talking to the store, uh, in the store, some other stores, you know, have, have thought about employing their own private security. Uh, I, I've heard this, you know, during, this is not a, a problem that's unique only to Roosevelt Island in these stores. And uh, they have been talking about getting their private security, but we we have been in, in, in that area where there's Dwayne Reed, Walgreens, the subway, uh, the homeless, uh, we, we have stepped up our patrol and you'll see a more visible presence of, of the the PSC offices down and around that area to try to have a deterrent, uh, not inside the store. We don't, we're not inside the store, but you will see more visible public safety in and around that area. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, uh, anyone else? Okay, well, thank you everybody for coming. Thank you, Kevin and Anthony, as always for being here uh, and talking with us and answering our questions. Um, we love Roosevelt Island. We love our community policing. And uh, thank you. Thank you for serving us. Uh, Good and night, thank everybody. You, Amy. Right. Thank Good you. Night. I want to see a smile before you leave. <laughs> thank you, thank Madam you. President. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Good night, Good night everybody. Good night. Good night.